I guess we better open the service with prayer first. You say, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here today. And uh, Lord, we pray for Brother Wade and Sister June. And just give us what we have needed for today, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I'm not a preacher, teacher, or speaker, but God put something on my heart. So, uh, Amen. my brother Aaron said it a few weeks ago, he said, uh, total obedience. <clears throat> Usually when we go to a nursing home and write a paper or some kind of subject, and uh, with, my, with the help of Brother Joseph, we wrote a, a paper on eagles. So today I just want to expound on it a little bit. So, uh, did you turn that on? Okay. Okay, let's, let's read our first scripture. Deuteronomy 32, 11. He said, As an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread it abroad her wings, taken them, bear them on her wings. <coughs> In the eagle in her nest, Brother Brown said, the word, he said, the eagle, the word means one feeding with food, which is a beautiful type of God who feeds his children by his mouth, his word. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he, the eagle that feeds his little eaglets with his word, he said, I believe in the word. <clears throat> in the message, as the eagle starts her nest, he said, and the church is starving today for some of that word. There's nothing will take this place. No, not nothing. It will take the place of the, to the eagles, but the real food, eagles, food. And we are eagles, so we have to have eagles' food. Not social gatherings, not but political speeches, or some little stitch and so party. But we need some eagles' food. Food fed from the mouth of Jehovah Eagle, that's why he likened us unto eagles. Eagle food comes from the mouth of the feeder, not some man-made theology but from the mouth of the feeder, which is Jehovah Eagle, who feeds with his own word. And the eagle will never bring her babies anything that would hurt them. He said, oh, I just love that. God will never make a promise that he won't stand behind. And every eagle just loves to get a hold of that word. He loves it because it comes from the mouth of Jehovah Eagle. He loves to receive it. And he said, uh, a lot of the quotes come from the eagle, as the eagle stirs her nest. So if I don't say where it comes from, that's where it comes from. He said, did you ever see an eagle compromise? He said, no, sir. There, there's no compromising in him. Neither does a genuine Christian. He ain't soft. He will hunt till he finds it. Yes, sir, he will find his meat. He wants fresh manna. He will get that there and dig till he finds it. <clears throat> he said he will fly higher and higher. If it's not in the valley, he will rise a little higher. The higher you go, the more you can see. So it's time for the eagles of this day to get flying higher. Dig into God's <clears throat> promises, not live on vulture food that's been killed years ago. Get out of it. Okay, Exodus 19.4. Bible said, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bared you on eagles' wings, and I brought you unto myself. The two 
great wings of the eagle are for deliverance. They also represent the Old and the New Testament. In the message, the coming of the Lord, Brother Ram said, the prophet prophesied 28 or 38 years ago, when they come out of their captivity, God will bring them forth on the wings of eagles. He said, the prophet saw the plane coming. He saw them setting down and picking them up and taking them back to the homeland. He didn't know what to call it. He, he just, they just looked like an eagle to him. So he said they brought them back on the eagle wings. That's when the Jews went back to their homeland. As the eagle stirred up her nest, he said, The eagle also is equipped with two great powerful wings, and the feathers, you cannot pull them out with a pair of pliers. Oh, they have to be tight, or when he gets up in that altitude, and then storms, they would come out and he'll fall. So he's got two wings, and I'm going to liken them, those two wings, to the New and the Old Testament that Jehovah Eagle spreads out before us. the God who is rich in mercy. And today the Holy Spirit is here to vindicate God's word. And that's the eagle wing that we're supposed to ride on. He said, not some man-made theology, but we are to ride upon the wings of the eagle to the promised land. Amen. Okay. I just want to talk a little bit about the eagle, okay? The eyesight of the eagle is eight times more powerful than man. The eagle is covered with two set of eyelids. One set is for flight and the other one is used to fly directly into the sun. Okay, I see a 40, 31. But they, they wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I believe in the word he tells of the eagle renewing his youth. It had, been, it had been thought that the eagle would ever so often renew his youth, bring itself to being young again. He said later we have found out that it does not exactly renew his youth, but what happens is that there are times when it feels so good that it acts young again. Here. Eagles mostly live about 60 years old. There's a time in an eagle's life called a moping season and they get really sick almost to the point of death. So they build a lot of calcium on their beaks. They can't fly or walk. So they beat their beaks on the rocks to knock some of that calcium off. Eagles fly and give them food for survival during this time. And some will live and some will die, just like the Christ, Christian spiritually. If you're an eagle, you have to eat eagle's food, which is the inflammable word of God. <clears throat> now, if we are eagles, when a brother or sister gets in the valley, we are supposed to help them get back in the heavenlies. Right. Amen? Yes, sir. Yes. He said, I have seen people who are bound in wheelchairs and upon dead beds with cancer, but when God's Spirit swept the revival, 
they were renewed and soared out of their wheelchairs and out of the cots rejoicing. Our God, he said, our God renews us. He renews our health. He renews our strength. He renews our hope. Amen. He's constantly renewing us, yes. renewing us. Do you see there ones why we are likened to eagles? We are renewed in spirit as they are. God likens his uh, prophets to eagles. He said, God likens prophets to eagles. The higher you go, the farther you can see. He said, if you're going to go high and haven't got the eye to see, farther, it would do no good to go higher. So when God, he takes us up, get, higher gives us ability to see farther. I like that. The higher you go, the farther you can see. Mm -hmm. right. Here's another. God like his prophets and also to you. The Holy Spirit will take a prophet way up high in the heavenly atmosphere and show him many things that will come to pass in the future. He took Nahum. He said of the Old Testament so high that he saw the cars which have to which we have today and how they were colliding with one another on the roads and he said the chariot, chariots will rage in the streets they shall jostle just to want one against another in the broad ways they shall, they shall seem like torches. They shall run like lightnings. Paul was taken up so high he saw the last days where men would be truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Paul as God's eagle soared up into the God's rim and saw all this, then returned to warn us about it. Oh, thank the Lord. He said, when I think of eagles and prophets and how they fly compared to poor earthbound chicken, the eagles determined that her brood shall not be like earthbound chickens. She will see that to that now, a chicken may be your denominational brother, but he knows nothing about heavenlies. He has never been up there, and those old barnyard chickens will sit on their old nest and cackle. He said, there's no such thing as divine healing, there's no such thing as speaking in tongues, there's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I like this right here. He says, well, how does he know? He has never been out of the barnyard to find out. He has never saw the blue heavens that God's great spiritual signs. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like right. He said, now the chicken is a bird just as the eagle, but the chicken knows little about heavenly, heavenly atmosphere. And speaking of eagles, he said, I'm reminded of a farmer west who put a, out west who put an eagle egg in with a stand of chicken. When it hatched out, it was one of the funniest looking little little thing. All the other chickens chirped and he couldn't understand why they were chirping about because he spoke a different language. I hope you know what I mean. He watched them and he didn't know what to do. They all picked on him because they said he was an odd fellow. I'll probably read a little bit more about that. So. The eagle builds its nest 10,000 feet high on the cleft of the rock. Uh, this is the type of the Christian believer having an understanding that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, and upon this rock, Jesus built his, built his church. <coughs> Brother Brown talks a little about this. He said, in Palestine, there are 40 types of eagles, and for, for centuries, I read a book, so a lot of this stuff came off a, a book, not Brother Brown's message. So, said, uh, 
He said, for centuries the eagle has been recognized by many nations, kingdoms, and, and empires as the king of birds. The eagle is a sign of freedom, strength, immortality, and authority. Man has repro reproduced an image of the eagle on coins, emblems, seals, and flags. The eagle is a heavenly bird. It can fly and see farther than any other bird. Then he talks about the chicken too. The chicken is a bird, just the eagle is, but it's an earthbound creature, and it can flop and fly a little bit. It can scarcely get its feet off the ground. Another thing I found, I found about the eagle, that uh, when they find a mate, and one of the birds dies, they do not look for another mate. So I guess they're harder than we are on marriage and divorce. <laughs> Another thing I want you to notice is this, a mother eagle would not build her nest on the ground. She goes to the highest mountain peak. A mother eagle makes her nest in the rock, feeds her little ones, and one day she decides that she does not want her brood to be like chickens. A chicken is, it, is a, a bird, just the eagle is, but it's an earthbound creature. It can flop and fly a little, but it can scarcely get its, its feet off the ground. He said, this reminds me of uh, so-called Christianity, which some people have today, just enough religion to make them miserable. You may be able to say that you have that, your name on the book, but have you ever soar in the heavenlies? He said, the eagle never makes its nest down here on earth. He makes it just as high in a rock as it can. He is a type of the church of the living God. What a blessed privilege it is to know that God has hidden us in the cleft of the rock, the cavalry, far beyond the howl of the enemy, mm -hmm. of the, oh, the privileges that we have, he said. High up there in the rock is where the mother eagle gives birth to her little ones. She nurtures them, cares for them, high in the rock, where the coyote could not, never climb. She was beyond them. I'm so glad that we have a heavenly Father who will, will, if we permit Him, put us in a place where the howling of the devils cannot bother us, and where the lure of whiskey and nightclubs cannot touch us, far beyond the polluted streams of this world and its fantasies. He said, now when the eagle builds her nest, she gets vines and sticks and leaves and pieces of wood and briars. She, she's very careful as she does not want her little babies to be pierced by the briars or have pieces of sticks poking them. So what does he, she do? She goes and finds a lamb and slays it and she takes the lamb's skin to the nest and shreds it and works it around until she has a nest real cozy and comfortable for her babies. And that is what God does for us. When God sees we're about to be born again, He watches us during the service to see what we will do. Don't forget that, and He will prepare a nest for you in His kingdom, for He knows so soon another eagle will be born to Him. Amen. As His Spirit woos you, notice how warm and soothe, soothe you feel. Notice it's not God, the Lamb that makes you abode so lovely and peaceful and safe. He is the Lamb of your nest, your abode. Praise the Lord. Right, right here, friends, I want to emphasize this. Above all, do appreciate God for the lovely abode He gives you. Remember, only fools walk with hobnailed shoes where angels fear to trot. I grieves me to hear you as God's children complain and murmur. Shame on you. All of you are guilty, and you people who call others holy rollers or fanatics, say shame on you. Don't you know that you're a fool for using such expressions? Let me tell you this, a fool will call another Christian a holy roller, 
or some other dishonored name, and the angels fear to even think such things. Let alone say, man, and you people come to a meeting called the works of God, Beelzebub, or taking up a petty attitude or shrug your shoulders and leave after a midnight or two said shame on you don't you know the angels would not dare say one thing against one of God's servants or his children and every meeting that is taking place God has his angels there to help out and these angels watch over you and take care of you all through the meeting and they are commissioned to go home with you to watch you over you and keep you safe and right here to let me ask you are you as concerned as this about your brother or is yours concerned about this about a meeting or oh, how is it is he makes it for us to walk with him Amen. And the message uh, shows the father, brother, and said, <clears throat> he said, be an eagle, be born again, nature change. Then you can walk up Jacob's ladder, then you can climb to the high spots to, <clears throat> where all things are possible to them that believe. But you got to be an eagle, a believer, he said, don't try. The Hebrews, they crossed as eagles across the Red Sea. Then none saying, following uncircumcised Egyptians tried to do the same, and they lost their life. You cannot impersonate Christianity. you got to be a Christian. Is that right? Amen. Ooh, good. <laughs> and the message to calm down, Brother Graham said, We love to talk about Azusa Street. We love to talk about 50 years ago. And I fussed at you all week telling you about how far we lost off from there. But well, we're so advanced in the Spirit of God into other things that we got now that they never even had back there. So they left the automobiles, got to their feet off and in the air. So they could have a few spiritual gifts, speaking in tongues, shouting, singing, spiritual songs, while they was floating around up there like butterflies, see? Certainly, that was a great age. But he said, oh brother, we are lifted far beyond that now. The church is away beyond that. The spiritual church is in the eagle age now. He said, the astronaut flying on above and looking down at the fellow citizen chicken. Sure fixing the chicken a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're far about that, way up yonder, in the heavenlies. Where Christ becomes the full thing that takes completely over and live his life and acts through you exactly like it did here on earth. The astronaut age. The countdown is on, brother. <clears throat> One more. Said in the fifth seal, and the fifth seal, brother, I'm said, now the fourth beast that was sent forth to combat the Antichrist in this last is his last beast. Are you ready? The last beast that was sent forth, or the last power to combat the Antichrist, who was against the teaching of God. The Antichrist was the eagle. See, the fourth living beast was the was an eagle. Now just now you just study the ages, study the scriptures. It's the eagle, and in the Bible, the last age was an eagle, and God likened Himself to <coughs> His prophets. See. Now watch, the last stage, the eagle age, a revealer of the true word. He said, and, then, and then at the, la the last power he brings on the eagle to restore the children back to the original faith. Again, uh, the fathers, the eagle age. And you notice, there is no more, there is no more beast. That's all of it. That's the end. Any comments for you? No comments? That's good.